Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 11th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today documented one of the little bit better, smarter PayPal phishing attempts. The lure is very typical for these kind of phishing attempts where it claims that someone else tried to log into your account. Now, when you're trying now to log into the phishing site, it's not going to redirect you to the real PayPal site like some of these phishing attempts. Instead, it's actually telling you that, well, your username and password was uh, blocked, the account is locked and then it's asking you for a bunch of other personal information to verify your identity. Now, I believe that most uh, users will probably sort of halfway through this process figure out that something isn't quite right. But the trick is that at this point, the attacker already collected a bunch of useful information. Good one to possibly include sort of in your awareness brief or whatever you do to train your users not to fall for these tricks. And if you use an phishing attack like this, I think uh, one of the important things to tr stress is that uh, people shouldn't be ashamed of falling for the initial uh, fish, but a report if they then sort of halfway through figured out that they probably entered too much information. And Dell patched a uh, uncontrolled search path vulnerability in its support assist software. This software is often pre-installed on Dell computers in order to help you debug issues on the system and interact with Dell support. Via this vulnerability, it's possible to elevate privileges by getting Dell support assist to execute arbitrary code on the system. Now, this software has sort of a rich recent security history for vulnerabilities just last year. One of them actually was in the PC Doctor toolbox component uh, that sort of shipped as part of a Dell support assist. And this was another uncontrolled search path vulnerability. The others were actually almost more severe. There was one vulnerability that sort of allowed uh, code execution via cross-site request forging and one that allowed uh, the manipulation of code downloaded by support assist via a man in the middle attack. So as much of this bloatware, you probably do just wanna uninstall it and get rid of it and maybe keep it around. If you ever need support, then you can install it again. Bleeping Computer has an interesting development that they noted when it comes to these tech support scammers. Now, tech support scammers, of course, they call you claiming to offer tech support, but often, well, uh, they make things worse in order to get paid. One trick they applied in the past is that they used a utility that shipped with Windows called Syskey that allowed you to lock your screen with a simple password. Password. Well, uh, Cisco is no longer included in Windows, so in order to help with this, tech support scammers are now using a third party utility called Lock My PC to accomplish the same thing. So they pretend to help you fix your computer. They will then lock it using this lock my PC utility download and then ask for essentially a ransom to unlock your system. Now, luckily, uh, these scammers tend to be cheap enough where they're using the free demo version of Lock My PC, which is functional with the small difference that there is a well-known password that you can use to always unlock your system. And the company behind uh, this Lock My PC utility has put together a special page, and I'll link to that in the show notes with uh, this particular password. It's just four times the nine, zero, and then four times the one. Again, this static password is not really a problem vulnerability. It's just that for the free version of the utility, well, uh, they leave uh, this backdoor to then entice you to buy the full version. 
At Palo Alto's Unit 42 took a look at Docker registries that are exposed to the internet. Docker registries, a lot of companies would like to run their own private Docker registries, essentially include information about your uh, Docker images. And well, uh, it turns out that according to Palo Alto, 12.4% of uh, the utility of the Docker registries they found did not require any authentication, which of course would allow an attacker to then potentially download or even upload and alter some of these Docker images, which of course could at the very least leak sensitive information and in the worst case be used to sort of inject malicious code into these Docker images. Probably worthwhile taking a look at your own Docker registries if you have some of your own private registry to see if they're properly secured. They didn't find a a lot of them. Uh, they found 941 Docker registries, which I think is a fairly small number. I would have expected more, but definitely take a look that yours is configured correctly. And more again about this in Palo Alto's blog. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.